Hello friends, welcome back. In this session, we will understand the types of autoencoders. In the previous session, I explained what an autoencoder is all about, how does it work, what is it meant for, all these things have been clarified in the previous session. If you have not listened to that session, I recommend you to listen to it and then to come here. We have multiple types of autoencoders available, starting with denoising autoencoder, vanilla autoencoder, under complete convolutional autoencoders, stacked autoencoder, deep autoencoder, and regularized autoencoder. I am not going to tell or talk about all the seven types. I am going to take the first four and explain you, and the rest three can be learned by yourself. It's easy because I will set the platform for you with the first four. Also, I am going to implement and build the convolutional autoencoder step by step for you. First, let us understand the denoising autoencoder. This would sound a little peculiar when I explain it, but you will definitely appreciate the intent behind it. Denoising autoencoders produce a corrupted copy of the input. I am going to send the input, I will corrupt it through the denoising autoencoder. But why do we do it? Why do we have to add noise to the input? Very simple. Autoencoders with more hidden layers than input run at a risk of learning the identity function. Remember, autoencoders with more hidden layers then the inputs will run at the risk to go with identity function what do you mean by that the output will be simply be equal to the input and it becomes useless because there will not be any learning output cannot be merely be equal to input in that case there won't be any learning so that's the point so when you have to avoid this you can introduce a random noise thus we can force the autoencoder to learn the original data but after the removal of the noise so what happens the autoencoder will have to identify the noise it will remove the noise and then learns the important features from the input data that's it you add a noise you identify a noise you remove it identify the features and go ahead that's it is called denoising autoencoder i have made a simple picture here i've got a original input i've got a random noise i add it together i send it into the system and it becomes a noisy image now. Then I encode it, I decode it. But before that, in this stage, I let to identify, I let to remove the noise, then I can go for the processing. That's it. Now, the next one is vanilla autoencoder. Right, we have already seen this. If you could recollect it properly, we have seen the same diagram to explain you what exactly is an autoencoder. Yes, this is the simplest version of all the available autoencoders and this is very ordinary. It has got only two layers, but you can see three here. As usual, the input layer has to be ignored. It has got hidden layer, output layer, and an input layer which is not going to be given any respect. And understand, the hidden layer is smaller than input and output layer. You can see that only two circles are given in the hidden layer, whereas it is 5 and 5 in the input and the output layer respectively. Now, the hidden layer is the compressed representation and with two sets of weights and biases. Whenever I talk about weight, whenever I talk about anything, weights are associated to it. Whenever I talk about weights, biases are also associated with it. And we encode our input data into the compressed representation and then we decode it back as the output stuff. This is what vanilla encoder, vanilla auto encoder is all about. I have input, I have a lesser number of layers at hidden layer, lesser number of components at hidden layer and then output layer. That's it. It's a very simple step and this is what I have used earlier to explain. Now, what is under complete autoencoder? Under complete, the name itself is uh, very clear and it itself is conveying the content. Under complete autoencoders will have smaller dimension for hidden layer when compared to input and output. So, whatever we have seen just now, vanilla autoencoders comes under this category. That's why I have retained the same diagram. So, whenever the hidden layer's dimension is lesser than the input and output, I can quote it as under complete. So what is the impact? Do we have any value there? Certainly yes, the neural network is forced to compress the information in fewer dimensions. So what is the approach that is all about here? Very simple, this is what encoders want and we need to compress it into fewer dimensions. Compression as much as possible. And this is called under complete autoencoders. The final one in this session, convolutional autoencoders. Convolution we have seen enough, 
we have seen enough of a scene and we have enough we have seen enough of scene and models also and i hope you have seen that videos if not i recommend you to see that to understand the complete history of cnn and the vast range of cnn models available and their application auto encoders does not accept that a signal can be seen as some of other signals i mean convolution aspect is never accepted into auto encoders before the evolution of auto encoders which are accepting and which are called as convolutional auto encoders convolutional auto encoders just use this concept of convolution inside it which broke the previous myth and this is an innovation right now so how does it work very simple the input will be sent into convolution encoding module and there we will have convolution and max pooling kind of stuff will happen there max pooling or average pooling will happen there and i told you this already whenever we talk about convolution most of the times we follow max pooling with it now after that we need to go for convolutional decoding there we have deconvolution and we learn unpooling which is opposite of uh, pooling operation that we have done and then we generate the output that's it so very simple process whatever we do in convolution in multiple layers we do the same here but we need to undo the same in this in the form of deconvolution as well as unpooling that's it in the next session we will build auto encoders but convolutional auto encoders which will be very easy for you to understand i recommend you to go through the rest of the auto encoders as well stacked deep and regularized they are easy and they are no difficult check it out and if you have any questions there as well you can ping me i'll be able to answer thank you very much for your support and consistent inputs let me know if you have any queries further i'll be able to answer please subscribe to the channel if you like the content thank you